Take Back Your Life with Dr. Marisa Fay. Every Thursday night at 7 on KCAA, NBC News Radio, AM 1050. Gotcha Racing Live, heard only on KCAA, is your command center for racing news, the hottest interviews, and DIY projects. We are your destination for interviews with racers and fans, on-track interviews, in-shop interviews with engine builders, car restorers. Hear from our correspondents on live track car shows. Gotcha Racing Live. Start your engine and race on over to KCAA, 1050 AM, 106.5 FM every Saturday at our new time, 11 AM, Gotcha Racing Live, where we put you in the driver's seat. This is 1050 AM, KCAA, Loma Linda, and 106.5 FM, Yukaipa. They're open again this morning, slightly higher. Stocks will get no help from crude. Oil prices are back under $39 a barrel because they're still a glut. Gasoline prices have been rising with oil the past few weeks, but now they've jumped 25 cents in four weeks to 202 a gallon on average. Apple's rolling out some new products today, possibly a new smaller iPhone that will have a faster chip and a better camera. Sherwin Williams is buying rival Valspar for $9 billion. Together, they'll own most of the paint aisle at Home Depot. Priceline.com has stuck a deal with Cuba to make hotel rooms there available to the U.S. customers on its Booking.com website. Before this, Americans had to reserve Cuban hotel rooms through tour groups or travel agencies. And Zootopia was the number one movie for the third week in a row this weekend, pulling in $38 million for Disney. Chuck Kamlick, CNBC Radio. Okay, forest animals, kids are coming to the forest, and it's up to us to make their visit a good one. Sparrow, have you practiced the most popular bird songs for the year? Of course. Catchy. I like it. River, how's the temperature? It's a refreshing 52 degrees, man. I love it. Uh, Turtle. He's not here yet, man. Uh, He's late every morning. Okay. Squirrel. The forest has been preparing just for you. To learn more about cool things to do in the forest, visit discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. You can learn to DIY just about anything. Today, we'll be making our very own bath beads. We'll need mineral oil, ammonia, and... and... Gosh, I feel like I'm forgetting something. After all, some things are better left to the pros, like buying a home. Because without an expert to guide you, you're just asking to get burned. Oh, look at that. It also works as a hair remover. So DIY yourself a favor and get Realtor. Head to Realtor.com slash Get Realtor today. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. From the KCAA Weather Center, I'm Ron Pritchard. For this morning, we've got patchy fog, mostly sunny skies and a high near 75. Tonight, a chance of showers, mostly cloudy skies, a low near 51. Tuesday, a chance of showers, cloudy skies, gradually becoming sunny with a high near 68. Tuesday night, mostly clear with a low near 47. Wednesday, sunny with a high near 74. Wednesday night, mostly clear, low near 50. Thursday, sunny with a high near 80. Thursday night, mostly clear, low near 50. Friday, sunny with a high near 81. Friday night, mostly clear, low near 52. Saturday, sunny with a high near 80. Saturday night, mostly clear, low near 53, Sunday sunny and a high near 79. That's your weather forecast for this hour from KCAA, 106.5 FM and 1050 AM, the stations that leave no listener behind. It's time for your KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5 traffic report. I'm Erin Brinker. In Ontario, we have stop and go traffic on the 60 westbound between Millican Avenue and the 57 Orange Freeway. The 60 west is slow from Millican to the 57. In Riverside, there's an accident. The right lane is blocked on the 91 westbound at Main Street in Corona. A wreck involving a big rig is blocking the right lanes. The drive is slow from Pierce and stays busy ahead to the 241. In uh, Branch Cucamonga, there is slow traffic on the 210 westbound between Day Creek Boulevard and Campus Avenue. Uh, The 210 West is slow from Day Creek to campus. In Riverside, there's an accident. Two lanes are blocked on the 215 northbound at University Avenue. A wreck is blocking the two left lanes. The drive is slammed from Eucalyptus. In Ontario, there's an off-ramp blocked on the 15 southbound at at Highway 60. A crash is blocking the left lane of the transition road. This has been your KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5 traffic report. I'm Aaron Brinker. 
Here's the latest. I'm Jay Corwin. Presidential candidate set to address a leading pro-Israel group today in D.C. Frontrunners Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton will headline the annual APAC conference. The American Israel Public Affairs Committee, Rabbi Rick Jacobs with the Union for Reform Judaism, says he doesn't plan to stick around for Trump's speech. A way of saying that we are deeply, deeply uh, uncomfortable and disturbed. Meanwhile, a Trump campaign spokeswoman tells ABC News they're adding extra security resources for larger events so campaign staff won't have to step in if an incident occurs. President Obama continues his historic trip in Cuba. It's been nearly 90 years since the U.S. president uh, stepped foot in Cuba. It is wonderful to be here. The president touched down yesterday in Havana. He'll meet with Cuban President Raul Castro today. It appears North Korea is continuing to test fire weapons. The isolated communist state today fired a number of what military observers are calling short-range projectiles into the sea. This follows North Korea's test firing of two ballistic missiles Friday. You're listening to the latest from 24-7 News. You're listening to KCAA, your good neighbor along the way. When I wake up, well, I know I'm going to be, I'm going to be the man who wakes up next to you. When I go out, yeah, I know I'm going to be, I'm going to be the man who goes along with you. If I get drunk... Good morning, good morning. I'm Aaron Brinker. And I'm Tobin Brinker. And we are on the Brink the Morning Show. So glad to have you with us today. Got Brandon McCormick in the booth. How you doing, Brandon? I'm doing well. How are you guys? <laughs> We're good. It's Monday. It's and Monday. And spring has sprung, Aaron. Spring has sprung. It was a nice warm weekend. Mm-hmm. Very warm weekend. You went to the shooting range on um, yesterday. I did. I have not done shooting with a shotgun in over 20 years. And yeah, you went pheasant hunting in like 1991. Yeah, and that was the last time. Yeah, and so it was kind of fun. Had some, had a friend who loaned me his uh, shotgun, and we got to go out to the range and did some skeet shooting. Um, I'm terrible. I will well, own because you haven't done it in 25 yeah, years. I'm terrible. My friends, my friends were pretty good, um, but uh, my one friend was having a little bit of an off day too. But it was fun. I mean, just to be out there with the guys and just shooting, and having a good time. And it came back to me after a bit. I mean, I was, you know, I didn't miss every shot. <laughs> I would have. <laughs> It was, my, my shoulder's a little sore, though, you know, because you get a little bit of the kick from the rifle. So a little, little stiffness in the shoulder this morning, but it's a good feeling. So, so not to be like your typical uh, male-female roles, um, uh, I met with the wife of one of the people that, we, that you went with, and we went shopping. Yes. And, and, and went to Muffin Top Bakery. Yes, and then <laughs> after we were all done, we met up for lunch, and we went for barbecue, which I love barbecue. It was famous, Dave. Mm. It was good. It was good. What did you do this weekend, Brandon? God, I know. Oh, um, I went shopping. Um, that's something you always do during the weekend. Um, I went to a new coffee shop, number seven, in Where um, is it? Rancho. Is it good? It is very good, and the owner is very passionate about all of the things that he does. It's um, I I recommend it. For um, a split second, when Brandon acted like he w- couldn't remember, I'm thinking that means he either had a really good weekend or a really bad weekend. <laughs> <laughs> um. And other than that, I hung out with friends, and God, I'm trying to remember what I did Saturday, because I remember, like, I did something all day Saturday, oh, so, and it's escaping me. Uh, you'll remember. Sometime during the show, you'll remember. I, I tried a new restaurant on, and I always love to talk about new restaurants. I tried a new restaurant on Friday. Um, I met with my insurance broker, who, isn't this exciting? Exciting radio. <laughs> Who's my brother? We went up to this place, um, Mesoterranean, which is a, uh, in Ranch Cucamonga, it is a Lebanese restaurant. Oh my gosh, it is so good. And the owner came up and talked to us while we were eating our food. And it was, uh, it was very good. Mesoterranean. You got to check it out. Mesoterranean. Yes, we oh. had, we had the um, Lebanese food. Lebanese food. We had the beef and chicken shawarma. And then, of course, hummus and rice and vegetable and a salad. And it you didn't was, have anything with lamb? I normally like lamb. I do normally like lamb, but I wanted the shawarma. Actually, they recommended the shawarma. Gotcha. And and the lamb was there on special that day, but you know they we asked what was best, and that's yeah. what that's what the uh, the uh, hostess said, who turned out to be the owner's daughter. But very very good, and they do catering and stuff. So Fam- I thought I'd family give family run restaurants. Exactly, right? me too, yeah. me too. So we have a great show planned for you all today. Uh, we are uh, the second half of the show going to be talking to Alicia Taverner. She is our relationship expert here on the show. Uh, she is uh, the owner of Rancho Counseling. She's a licensed marriage and family therapist, and, and she helps me to fix all my problems. She does, although I'm, I'm pretty screwed up. I don't know. Yeah, it could take a while. With it you. could take a while with me. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, and so um, obviously lots of great news to talk about, lots of things going on. Um, the big the big news uh, nationally is the president's historic trip to Cuba. Cuba? Yes. So um, stepping into history, President Barack Obama opened an extraordinary visit to Cuba on Sunday, eager to push uh, – uh, decades of acrimony deeper into the past and forge irreversible ties with America's former adversary. It's wonderful to be here, he said. Obama's whirlwind trip is crowning moment uh, in his and Cuban President Raul Castro's um, ambitious effort to restore normal relations between their countries. While deep differences persist, the economic and political relationship has changed rapidly in the last 15 months since leaders vowed a new beginning. Uh, wielding an umbrella on a rainy Havana morning, the president stepped off of Air Force One and was greeted by top Cuban officials, including Cuba's foreign ministry minister and U.S. ambassador. He was joined by First Lady Michelle Obama and daughters Malia and Sasha with dozens of U.S. lawmakers and business leaders arriving separately for Obama's visit. You know they want cigars and rum. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, you know, in his first stop uh, in uh, first stop was a Havana hotel where Obama greeted U.S. Embassy staff and their families and noted the momentous nature of the visit. The first by a sitting U.S. president since 1928 when Calvin Coolidge arrived in a battleship. This is a, his- this is a historic visit and historic opportunity to engage with the Cuban people. So how do you feel about this? I have mixed feelings. You know, on the one hand, um, I get it that, you know, it, the policy has not changed for 50 years and it really hasn't done much. Um, but at the same time, I think that, that just sort of wildly throwing open the doors and saying, oh, we'll just go back to being buddies is naive. So are so, people still climbing into boats and dying trying to get to the United States? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and and I don't know that anything has changed on that level. Yeah. But perhaps he feels, you know, we had detente with China in the seventies. Yeah. And so, you know, perhaps the thought is, is that by normaling normalizing relations, um, that it will make things easier. Yeah. You know, for both sides. And certainly for Cuba. I mean, the reality is is that Europe has been trading with Cuba. Other other countries in the world have been trading with Cuba. Yeah. And, you know, they're ninety miles off our coast. Yeah. But there's still, you know, the the embargo, whatever you want to call it, is basically, you know, has kept them relatively poor as a nation. And the the worry is is that now you give them the financial resources to really harm their people. <laughs> you know, I mean, and I mean, not that poverty wasn't already harming them. It's just I have mixed feelings. I'm not sure how it's all going to turn out, um, and I worry that we're sort of legitimizing the the torture and the things that they've done to their folks. You know. Yes. Um... So the Cuban government, um, you know, they, 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 they jail political dissidents and they yep. kill pol- political dissidents. Um, however, on making changes to, to its single-party political system and to the strict limits on media, public speech, and assembly and, uh, and dissent, uh, in 2008, Castro, uh, Raul Castro, la- Castro launched economic and social reforms that appear slow-moving to many Cubans and foreigners but are lasting and widespread within Cuban society. The changes have allowed hundreds of thousands of people to work in the private sector and have relaxed limits on cell phones, Internet, and Cubans' comfort with discussing their country's problems in public, for example. Yeah. And so, you know, in a, under communism, whether it was in uh, the German Democratic Republic or um, the North Korea or Soviet Union or, you know, now under Cuba, um, or not now, but, you know, before under Cuba, you, you would be jailed if yeah. you were somebody even thought you were talking negatively, speaking negatively about the um, about the government. I mean, my goodness, in, well, in North Korea, this American student, I think he's 21 years old, stole a stupid poster. Was it boneheaded? Yes. But he's going to a torture camp for 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the other thing that's a positive, I guess, is that, you know, if you look at history, capitalism has a democratizing effect. It does. Right. Um, that the process of people buying and selling from each other and having uh, more open markets. And so as, as the American economy comes in, as people have opportunities to, to buy stuff and get stuff that they didn't have before, this begins a you know, conversation, a flow of not just money, but a flow of ideas. But, and you know people want to go to Cuba. Yeah. I mean, you as a tourist, you want to go and see what it's like. Apparently, it's a complete time warp. I mean, seriously, back in the 50s, yeah. you feel like you've stepped back in time. Yeah. Um, but the beaches are still beautiful, and you, st- the Cuban cigars are, are still, you know, sought after. Yes. And so, you know. And the rum is still very rummy. The f- rum is very rummy. So when is this, when does Sandals Havana open up? Right. 
you know, then you know you've arrived when Sandals Havana opens up. Yeah. Or maybe it'll be a beaches and you can take Although, your kids. Although, you know, I did, read, I did read from some folks that because of the, ab- the absolute abject poverty, that if you go there as a tourist, you know, that you really have to, they, they kind of only want you to go to very certain areas. And we saw this in some of the other island nations. Oh, you know, Jamaica's just, like that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's interesting, I mean, how that's going to be handled. I mean, I think that you'll end up with, like you said, these sort of resorts where people stay, which are really nice and have all the amenities. Mm-hmm. But the, the actual folks on the island may not be living anywhere near that luxurious life. <laughs> well, and I wonder, because before, you know, when, when uh, you know, in the 50s and in, in Cuba's, have, Cuba's heyday, yeah. um, you know, there was gambling and all of the social issues that came along with the casino lifestyle. Yeah. I mean, that's where all the jet setters went. That's where the Rat Pack went. That's where, you know, all those people in the 40s and 50s went yeah. um, to party in Cuba. Capone. Yes, the well, mob. and the mob. Yeah, they were there as well. So, you know... It'll be interesting to watch. I, yeah. I have mixed feelings as well. Um, you know, the, certainly the, the Cuban community in Florida and other, other parts of the United States, they know how horrible uh, Fidel Castro was. Yeah. They, know, um, they know their families lived through it. And so yeah. they have very different feelings than those, those of us who romanticize, tend to romanticize Cuba, yeah. you know, and people who wear the Che Guevara shirts. So this, this is the uh, part of what I call the West Wing presidency, too. There's been a series of things Gosh, that, no kidding. that uh, uh, Obama has done that he seriously took straight from a TV show called The West Wing. And one of them was at the end of President, fictional President Bartlett's term. He wanted to normalize relationship with Cuba. Yes, right? and, and it was it was all hush hush. He went to Cuba, or he yeah. sent his former chief, chief of staff, staff yeah. to Cuba, and yeah, yeah, and you know, and so the same sort of, of things going on here. It's just uh, it's interesting. Interesting to watch. Historic times. We definitely live in interesting times. I'm not sure that's a good thing. I agree. It is uh, six fifteen. It's time for a break. I'm Aaron Brinker, and I'm Tobin Brinker, and we are on the brink, and we'll be right back. KCAA is your CNBC News affiliate. We're the station that gets down to business. Do you want exposure for your business or organization? Check out Digital Network Advertising. Digital Network Advertising is where businesses display your ad inside their building. You can choose your marketing sites or jump on the DNA system and advertise with all participants. Your slide holds the virtual billboard for 14 seconds and is displayed three times an hour. It's a novel way to be seen, be discovered, and to be remembered. Digital Network Advertising with networks in Redlands and Yukaipa. Call 909-222-9293 for introductory pricing. That's 909 909- Two 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 nine two nine three. Looking for a great cover band or one of the world's top tribute artists for your corporate event? You've come to the right place. David Levin Entertainment, Southern California's premier entertainment company, serving the Inland Empire, Orange County, Los Angeles, and San Diego. Call us at 650-282-5009 or visit us online and watch the videos at davidlevinent.com. That's davidlevinent.com. Hi, this is Steve Allardt from Rancho Financial with the Mortgage Minute. With property values increasing, this might be the perfect time to do a loan checkup to see if it makes sense to refinance. Do you have an equity line? If your equity line is getting close to 10 years old, your payment is about to fully amortize. Coupled with the certainty that the feds will soon increase short-term rates, there might be a substantial jump in payment on your line of credit. If we combine your current loan, equity line, and possibly even some of your credit debt, there could be a substantial reduction in what you have to pay each month. Do you have VA eligibility? VA will allow 100% cash out financing. This may be a perfect time to use your eligibility. We can go 85% cash out with FHA or 80% with a standard conventional loan. There are many possible options that could make a huge difference in your monthly payments. That's why you need a loan financial planner to provide you with all of your possible options. Give me a call, Steve Allidort, at 888-563-1070. That's 888-563-1070, or go to loanfinancialplanner.com. In the mood for some great Chinese food? Well, Mr. Yu's Chinese food is where you need to be. Mr. Yu's Chinese food not only has a delicious dinner menu, they also offer delicious lunch specials including their yummy fried rice and chow mein. But get this, it also includes any two items just for $5.85. Or you can get any one item for only $4.85. You should also try their big bowl special for just $4.10. The service is fast and friendly. Mr. Yu's Chinese food is located 
located at 256 Carousel Mall in San Bernardino, California. To contact Mr. Yu's Chinese food, call 909-383-0195. Again, that's 909-383-0195. And yes, the Carousel Mall is still open. That's right! What have I learned so far? I've learned that dropping out of high school was my decision. But as a single mom, that decision affected more than just me. To set an example, I had to be the example. I found a free high school diploma program at Learn for Life that fits around my busy life. I have a team of teachers, tutors, and counselors that really care. I learn at my pace in an environment that is safe and comfortable. What have I learned so far? I've learned that I can change my life. Are you 14 to 19 years old and looking for a free high school diploma program with flexible meeting times? This program allows you to keep your job or important family responsibilities while earning your high school diploma. If you've fallen behind on credits or dropped out of school completely, get back on track with free tutoring, a caring faculty, and one-on-one -on -one attention. For more information on how to reach your graduation goal, visit learnforlife.org. That's L-E-A-R-N, the number four, L-I-F-E dot O-R-G. Or in Enroll today by calling 877-360-LEARN. That's 877-360-LEARN. For more local radio every day, tune into KCAA Loma Linda. Welcome back. I'm Erin Brinker. And I'm Tobin Brinker. And we are on the brink, the morning show. And we are so excited that you're joining us here this Monday morning. Um, lots of stuff going on around uh, Inland Empire. We talked about this on Friday. Um, the Orange County Register and the Press Enterprise, you know, there was a, the, the L.A. Times, the group that owns the L.A. Times, is trying to buy the two papers um, because they're, they're Freedom Communications, their previous owner, is in bankruptcy, and so or their current owner. And so, um, uh, but the Department of Justice stepped in and said, no. You know, we we don't we're, and they they sued. I'm being so articulate this morning. They sued, saying no, you shouldn't be able to. You, you shouldn't own all of the papers in Southern California, all of the major papers in Southern California. So the future of Freedom Communications newspapers, the uh, Register and the Press Enterprise, is set to be decided today in bankruptcy court. With only ten days until uh, Freedom Communications is expect to run out of cash, expected to run out of cash. Wow. Right? Talk about cutting it close. I know. An attorney representing Freedom said they will go with Digital First Media's $52.3 million bid and will appear in court on Monday to confirm the sale. The U.S. Bankruptcy Court Judge Mark Wallace is scheduled Monday to rule on the bid, but doesn't have the discretion to overrule Freedom's wishes and go with Tribune's bid instead, according to William Lobel, an attorney with the Costa Mesa-based firm of Lobel, Weiland, Goldman, Golden, Friedman. The week since uh, the initial bid was accepted has not been without its ups and downs. On March 13th, uh, DFM, which operates nine daily newspapers in the L.A. area, including the San Bernardino Sun, um, made a $45.5 million stocking horse open bid for Freedom Communications, which declared bankruptcy in November. A stocking horse bid is made before an official auction and serves to establish a minimum price for the assets and also grants some protections, including a guarantee of of a breakup fee if the company is outbid. One of the other three bidders, Tribune Publishing, also publishes the LA Times and the San Diego Union Tribune. Picking up the register and PE would make them the dominant players in Orange and Riverside counties. A letter sent by the U.S. Department of Justice Antitrust Division to the Freedom Bankruptcy Lawyers on March 14th warned them that a Tribune win could create a monopoly with 98% and 81% of all newspaper sales in Orange and Riverside counties, respectively. And Assistant Attorney General William J. Bayer vowed to take action if that were to happen. Industry experts expressed surprise at the idea that in 2016, when the media landscape has changed dramatically, newspaper monopolies are something the government should be concerned about. And you know, I I think they should be concerned about it in all kinds of media. The fact that very you know very few media companies own all of the media in the United States is a little terrifying. You know, it's it's a little. Um, I think it's a I think it's a problem because then the corporate media just d controls uh, the flow of information. And I say this as an independent station. Um, KCAA is an independent station. We are an affiliate of CNBC, but we uh, you know the 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 control over content is made by an independent owner. Here, 
the inmates run the asylum. That's and right. We're proud of it. We're proud of it. Dang we're it. Proud of it. It's Lord of the Flies on the radio. You can't tell us what we have to say. <laughs> we can just make stuff up on our own, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> That's right, because everything on the internet is true. I remember that conversation from Friday. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, I, we kind of disagreed about this. I mean, I, I kind of think that the argument is is a legitimate argument, that there are so many diverse sources of information that we get today, and the idea of the monopoly is a little outdated. But having said that, I'm not opposed to what this judge has done. I mean, it looks like what they're doing is they're saying, no, 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 Tribune would be a monopoly. Don't do that. You can go with this low, slightly lower bid, mm -hmm. slightly lower bid. Right. Yes. So we don't have the monopoly, and that looks that appears to be what they're trying to do. Right. They're going to yep. go with a different group. So cool. Good so for them. Um, I, I we'll see what happens. I mean, it's exciting because it means that the um, that the Press Enterprise, which is our local paper here, um, and you know, because we we have the, the San Bernardino Sun, the Inland Valley mm -hmm. Daily Bull Bulletin, Redlands Daily Facts, and San Bernardino. Excuse me, San Bernardino County, and in Riverside County, the the Press Enterprise is the main paper. Um, uh, in addition to the weekly papers, which which we like very much too, um, but it it'll impact this area. So interested just, to see what happens. I just hope that they get back on a firmer financial footing and they actually start doing more local news because I know this the current group that's on them, you know, half the stories in there were like from you know Long Beach and other places. And yes. it's like what? Why yes. Well, this? and that happens with the Sun. Yeah. That that's because the Long Beach paper is also owned by the same company that owns the Sun. Yes, I'm but sorry. But in the Press Enterprise, you go to their website and you pull up a story that's on their front page and you're likely to find something that is very out of date. Yes. Which is which shouldn't happen. Yeah. You know, there should be content that's that's new or at least relatively new. Yeah. Um so yeah. So on to other stories. The the big there was a big rave this weekend. Are you going to rave about the rave? I'm going to rave about the rave. There were a lot of arrests at this rave. Or are you going to rant about the rave? I think a rant might be a better more. Okay, I'm going to rant about the rave. Nearly 250 people were arrested at Beyond Wonderland uh, 2016. Uh, there was a two day electronic dance festival a rave in Devore, um, and so drug, alcohol, and trespassing related crimes were the were the biggest. Uh, causes of the arrest. Possession for sale of ecstasy. Shocking. Shock, drugs. Shocking. They're doing drugs at these things, Aaron. I know. And I'm guessing trespassing means somebody hopped a fence. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, and, and that's not uncommon because these things aren't cheap. And you get these crazy kids who think, oh, I'll just hop the fence. And, and they, they're tutus. They, yeah. And they catch them. And they're lollipops. They and they're, them. you know. The more, the, the, the more shocking number, Aaron, though, is the people that got sick. 20 people were hospitalized during the two-day festival. Ten were admitted to the hospital on Friday. Nine were hospitalized on Saturday. And one patient was airlifted for medical treatment. They don't airlift you unless it's serious, Aaron. I know. And I've, I've seen the – they have like a full-on medical hospital on site for these people. And they're almost all drug or alcohol related. That somebody's overdosed and, you know, they're getting their stomach pumped and they're trying to – you know. Yeah, and ecstasy, I think, is the drug of choice for these kinds of things. Yeah. So have you ever been to one of these, Brandon? No, um, I don't like large crowds of people, so it's not for me. Yeah. And it is la large. I mean, you know, they have 20,000, 30,000 people in one of these things. There's, this is a big thing. It is a big thing. I so. mean, I love art, and some of the music that's there I like, but I, I just can't deal with that many people. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot. It's a lot. Well, and speaking of venues that hold a lot of people, um, for those of us who are who are who came of age in the late '80s, early '90s, um, uh, Irvine Meadows Amphitheater was a mainstay. was yeah. a was an icon. All the best bands played there. I saw Oingo Boingo there. Um, you know, th so many bands have played there. Yeah, it's going away. They're getting it's rid of Irvine Meadows. It. They're closing it to build, I think, condos in a parking lot. Wow. So. Which became, it was Irvine Meadows, and it was the Verizon Amphitheater, and yeah. I guess it's Irvine Meadows again, but they're shutting down the venue. Must, must not have been financially profitable. Maybe they weren't able to get the big bands. Maybe, maybe people were looking for a different kind of venue. No, I think that the real estate is so valuable yeah. that, they, that, they, that, that the revenue they could get from selling, you know, from, from developing it differently will, is much greater. But Irvine, I liked Irvine because you did have more of a sense of an intimate setting. I mean, it wasn't so big that you were like, you know, 
so far away you've got to pull out your binoculars or just look at the big screens to see them. Your I mean, your you nose felt, isn't bleeding. Yeah, I mean, you felt like you were there and you could see the band. You know, you were within a decent range from the stage, no matter where you were. So I think it was Irvine Meadows that we went to and uh, the um, Kelly Clarkson. We saw you. Yeah, yeah, that was a birthday present for you, yeah. Kelly Clarkson. And we also went to the uh, Family Values tour, but in the mid two thousands. Yeah, I remember that one too. Um, and Evanescence was there, and Corn and Fly, Fly Leaf. Fly 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 Leaf. Fly Fly leaf, not yes. fly wheel. You can tell the different styles of music in our family. Fly leaf was there, yes. which I like them very much. And there yes. were a bunch of other people that were awful, but those are the those were the headliners. Yes. Um, and Evanescence, of course, was terrific. Um, I wonder how many people were arrested at that concert, and how many had to be airlifted. Yeah, no, there were some – so by the end of the evening – because we used to go to concerts all the time. I certainly did. Yeah. I have seen so many bands. But then it just – you know, I, the, the idea that people were – getting into major fist fights, setting things on fire, yeah. and vomiting all over everywhere was yeah. no longer appealing to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you see that. I mean, that's one of the challenges. You go to a big venue, big concert like that. You, you have people that do stupid stuff, and it, that gets old after a bit. It does. You know? It does. You know, and they think about, you know, looking back on who played there, I mean, um, uh, Michael Jackson was there in 1988, uh, Bob Dylan, Coldplay. Was, um, it, was 88 off the wall? What, what was that tour? That was, no, that was the bad tour. The bad, oh. I'm bad, I'm bad. Now I'm thinking of grabbing, Weird Al. And he kept grabbing himself. He always did that. <laughs> Ugh, it's kind of weird. So, um, yeah, it opened in 1981 and had different... It, 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 of course, it's had different names over the years. It shared a 500-acre swath of land with a drive through animal park, that I don't remember, no. and a water park. Both of, both of those have since closed. After Wild Rivers Water Park shut down in 2011, the Irvine Company built the first two phases of its Los Olivos apartment community on its former site, opening the development in 2013. And so now they're just finishing it. No, I mean, that, transition. That, it really is. And, and most of that land was, was probably parking lot. I think there was more land for the parking lot than there was for the, the actual Oh, yeah, absolutely. Amphitheater. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, but K-Rock had their weenie roast there. Yeah. And, um, you know, they're the Fish Fest, the Christian Rock, because there's the Fish is a radio, Christian radio yeah. station in L- in uh, Orange County. There were there were uh, country fests there. There were, I mean, all kinds of stuff there. We should have a talk radio fest here at the mall, you know? <laughs> Aaron's looking at me like I'm crazy. You are crazy. I am crazy. So it is 6.30. When we get back, we'll be talking with uh, uh, Alicia Tavener. She is our our, uh, relationship expert here on the show. And uh, looking forward to that. I'm Aaron Brinker. And I'm Tobin Brinker. And we are on the brink, and we'll be right back. Thank you, Inland Empire, for listening to KCAA Radio. Here's the latest. I'm Jay Corwin, presidential candidate set to address a leading pro-Israel group today in D.C. Frontrunners Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton will headline the annual APAC conference. The American Israel Public Affairs Committee, Rabbi Rick Jacobs with the Union for Reform Judaism, says he doesn't plan to stick around for Trump's speech. A way of saying that we are deeply, deeply uh, uncomfortable and disturbed. Meanwhile, a Trump campaign spokeswoman tells ABC News they're adding extra security resources for larger events so campaign staff won't have to step in if an incident occurs. President Obama continues his historic trip in Cuba. It's been nearly 90 years since the U.S. president uh, stepped foot in Cuba. It is wonderful to be here. The president touched down yesterday in Havana. He'll meet with Cuban President Raul Castro today. It appears North Korea is continuing to test fire weapons. The isolated communist state today fired a number of what military observers are calling short-range projectiles into the sea. This follows North Korea's test firing of two ballistic missiles Friday. You're listening to the latest from 24-7 News. Senate Minority Leader Harry Reid says the Republican Party stands to get some serious damage in the Senate over the battle to fill a seat on the U.S. Supreme Court. They're going to wind up losing Senate seats they shouldn't have lost. I'm kind of glad they're doing it, but it's so foolish. The Nevada Democrat appeared on NBC's Meet the Press and said Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is putting GOP lawmakers in a tough spot by vowing not to hold hearings on President Obama's nominee Merrick Garland. The Sweet 16 is all set after another wild day in the NCAA tournament. Texas A&M advanced with an improbable 92-88 double overtime win over Northern Iowa. Other winners include Wisconsin, Oregon, Villanova, Oklahoma, Maryland, Syracuse, and Notre Dame. And Serena Williams says a tennis tournament CEO is very much mistaken in claiming that women players are riding the coattails of the men. If I was a lady player, I'd go down every night on my knees and thank God that the Roger Federer and the Rafa Nadal were born because they've carried the sport. Indian Wells CEO Raymond Moore made the comment yesterday. I'm Jay Corwin. It's
It's time for your KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5 traffic report. I'm Aaron Brinker. In Chino, we have stop and go traffic on the 60 westbound between Mountain Avenue and the 57 Orange Freeway. The 10 West is slow and go from Cherry Avenue to the 57. In Hesperia, there's an accident. The right lane is blocked on the 15 southbound before the 395. In uh, Ranch Cucamonga, I'm sorry, in Riverside. An accident has cleared on the 215 northbound at University Avenue. A wreck has been cleared from the two left lanes. The drive remains slammed from Cactus. And, in, and finally, in Ontario, an off-ramp has reopened on the 15 southbound at the 60. A crash has been cleared from the left lane of the transition road. This has been your KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5 traffic report. I'm Aaron Brinker. From the KCAA Weather Center, I'm Ron Pritchard. For this morning, we've got patchy fog, mostly sunny skies and a high near 75. Tonight, a chance of showers, mostly cloudy skies, a low near 51. Tuesday, a chance of showers, cloudy skies, gradually becoming sunny with a high near 68. Tuesday night, mostly clear with a low near 47. Wednesday, sunny with a high near 74. Wednesday night, mostly clear, low near 50. Thursday, sunny with a high near 80. Thursday night, mostly clear, low near 50. Friday, sunny with a high near 81. Friday night, mostly clear, low near 52. Saturday, sunny with a high near 80. Saturday night, mostly clear, low near 53, Sunday sunny and a high near 79. That's your weather forecast for this hour from KCAA 106.5 FM and 1050 AM, the stations that leave no listener behind. San Bernardino, Loma Linda, Rialto listens to KCAA Radio. Welcome back. I'm Aaron Brinker. And I'm Tobin Brinker. And we are On the Brink, the morning show on KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5. So excited to welcome back to the show Alicia Taverner. She is our relationship relationship expert here on On the Brink, the morning show. And uh, she is the owner of Rancho Counseling in Ranch Cucamonga. She's a licensed marriage and family therapist. And it's so great to have you back, Alicia. Hello. Alicia, hello. You? Can you hear me? Ah, I can hear you now. Welcome. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> it's good to be back. How are you guys? Uh, we're good. We're good. I'm on spring break, so I'm especially happy. He's doing great. Oh, <laughs> very well rested then, huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, perfect. So, so uh, what are we talking about today? Uh, today, I thought we could talk about the healing process after the loss of a relationship. Which, let's face it, it really sucks, right? Yeah. It does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's been a while for you guys. But, you know, even if you haven't lost your relationship, you can be in the midst of a rocky road with your partner. And so there's one thing that you can do that can really help yourself heal. Um, I think it's my number one tip. And it's something that I'm constantly just pounding into the heads of my client. And so it can't be found in the arms of another person or at the bottom of a bottle of beer, um, and all those, those things might sound appealing, you know, while you're hurting, they just tend to cause more harm than good. But I think that the best thing that people can do for themselves in order to heal is just to reconnect with their strengths. Um, what does that mean? And Yeah, so what I mean by that is a lot of times in relationships, there are parts of us that just become lost, or they become overshadowed. Um, but those parts are really important. They make us who we are, and they contributed to who we were before we entered into the relationship, and then yet those parts often get neglected. So um, it takes a bit of reflection and introspection for that to to come up, but um, I think the best way that we can do this is to start journaling, um, thinking about the parts of yourself that have been neglected that once brought you a sense of happiness and strength. So more specifically, you know, like a lot of times we get into relationships and then we just forget about some of the things that brought us joy in the past. So um, I like to ask my clients things like, were you once an athlete or were you involved in some sport that you no longer do? Is there a creative side to you that you don't see because you become too busy um, are you great with money? Are you a great parent? Are you a great friend? And who are those people that just make you feel really good about yourself? And sometimes we neglect our other relationships too. 
Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's it's and Tobin and I were talking about this weekend with um you know, with people that we know who are very very different when they're with their their boyfriend or girlfriend than they are with their with their other friends. Um and then if that mm-hmm. breaks up, they're kind of when they break up, they're kind of trying to left they're left wondering who they are. Um they because they put everything they had into that relationship. Yeah, exactly. And I think it help it it happens to um, during different life transitions, you know, like um, people who become, you know, when you become a parent, you're so focused on just like parenting and keeping this little child alive. And, you know, you, some of the things that bring you joy just really go to the wayside. And I remember personally, you know, after having been on maternity leave and going back to work after having my son, I kind of just thought like, wait a minute, there's like, I forgot about me, you know, and I really recognize, you know, when you step step back into your place of employment, like, well, I was a totally different person before I had this child. Um, and, you know, there are parts of me that have just been neglected in the last several months. But it, I think when big things happen, you know, like a, of a loss of a relationship, so your normal really changes. And then you're forced to look at yourself and say, well, you know, what have I been doing the last however long your relationship was? And what have I been neglecting during that time? I had a a friend a few years back who went through a really ugly divorce, and I ended up spending a lot of time with him uh, in the months that followed. And some of it was those negative things where he wanted to go out and go drinking, and I would just sort of be the person who would sit there and listen to him talk. But, you know, it took him a long time to sort of regain his balance and his sense of self, and it was – it was it was hard. I really didn't know what, quite what to do for him, except just to sort of be there and just sort of make sure he didn't hurt himself, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and those are definitely difficult times. But um, I'm sure that gaining a sense uh, back of who he was without this relationship uh, was probably the best way for him to heal. Um, and I think you know I don't want to be sexist, but I think women do it a little bit more than men, where we place far too much emphasis on you know, our romantic relationship. Mm, yes. And when you're married, you know, that's supposed to be, yes, that is your main relationship. That's supposed to be your main source of uh, connection. However, we can't get everything that we need from, from one relationship. It just isn't possible. Um, you know, we need other people and other connections to make us feel whole. And so when you stop, um, when you stop feeding those parts and you stop, recognizing that those things are necessary, um, you know, you change. And those parts were there before you entered into this relationship, which is really important, you know, and it's probably what attracted your partner to you. So if you're not doing those things that make you who you are and you're not showing up authentically, um, then, you know, what does that say? So wouldn't wouldn't something similar happen um, for for both men and women? But I was thinking maybe more strongly men when they when their a job is lost, and so that identity mm-hmm. of of what you you know you were a policeman or you were a banker or you were whatever, and you lose a job and then you have this kind of you're unmoored. You don't know who you are and where you fit and what the next step will be. Yeah, I think that's really true, um, and I think that's why it's important not to put so much emphasis on, you know, our career is just, you know, it's a career. However, you know, who are you? And you're not a policeman. You're a person who goes to work and, you know, does this job. But who is that person behind this title? Um, Who is this person behind this title as, you know, policeman or mother or wife? You know, there's so many parts to us that can often get neglected. And I think it's really important that we take a look at the whole self. You know, it's interesting um, that you said mother because uh, I experienced the first of my children leaving the nest last summer, and it was mm-hmm. really difficult for me. You know, I may, I think I maybe have talked about that. I know I've talked about this. Um, it was, you know, I went into a funk for a good several weeks um, because my son was gone and and he just moved across the country. It wasn't like, I mean, God forbid he didn't pass away. He was still alive, but he was not around anymore. And and we've just learned that our daughter is going to be leaving soon to go for a year long exchange program. And, and I, yeah, she's doing a study abroad and I can, I can see Aaron already sort of 
you know, tensing up a little bit about the thought of, of that empty nest again. It's, you know, and that's been a real challenge is how do you define yourself? I mean, because she's been the mom for so long. Yeah, I mean. And, and now she just has to be the wife. That's well, it. <laughs> Just well, the wife. So, so Tobin and I got got graduated from college at 22. We got married when I was 23. We had our first child when I was 24. Our second child at 26. And so my whole adult life um, has been focused on kids. I mean, you know, it it's a uh, and so with with them leaving, which is I, I know a little different from a from a relationship breaking up. And I certainly wouldn't stand in their way. I have been left feeling a little unmoored. Mm-hmm. And I think that's quite normal um, because you're so used to focusing, you know, your main focus is on, you know, making sure that they have everything that they need to be successful. And so, you know, you can look at it as a loss, but you can also look at it as you're gaining the time back for yourself. So what are you going to do with that time? Um, You know, what can you do to feed yourself to fill your cup up? Um, Because, you know, I think mothers do it a lot. We put ourselves on the sideline and we put our kids first. Um, but there are so many more parts to ourselves. There's, no. you know, or is there a creative part to you that you've been neglecting? Is Certainly. there something that you've always wanted to do that you haven't haven't done because you just haven't had the time? Now, Alicia, you mentioned at the beginning of the segment that you felt that that journaling was a big part of helping people to sort of reconnect with who they are. Do you have specific journaling exercises or things that they questions they should be asking as they sit down to journal that help to focus them in better on on that reconnection yeah i do um and you can can actually find that on my website i have a little freebie Ah. um on on my website at ranchocounseling.com but um it's just a list of journal prompts and i think what's really important too when you're healing and in in terms of journal journaling i always ask my clients to think about their part in the relationship, you know, maybe the relationship ended um, because their partner decided, you know, it was over, but it's important to take responsibility and to understand what was it that I did or didn't do um, that contributed to the end of this relationship and kind of working backwards from there and just looking at the relationship as a whole. So just um, talking about things in your journal um, that make you happy throughout the day, talking about things in the past relationship that made you happy to kind of piece together some clues about what it is that you're passionate about. If maybe you can't think of some of the things that, uh, you know, are you've been neglecting. You know, I, there I, there have been times in my life where I've journaled a lot. Um, as I'm as I'm working through something that's difficult, and I find that if I allow the first ten minutes of journaling to just be stream of consciousness, um, you I I find myself decluttering my mind in ways that make mm-hmm. me more productive, and then life gets busy and I stop doing it. But I really need to do it again. It's so powerful, and because it's kind of like therapy, you know. And sometimes my clients will come and they sit across. The, you know, from me, and they talk about something, and then they look at me, and they'll say, "That sounds really stupid." <laughs> you know, it's it's just hearing yourself say the things out loud, or read what you wrote, and reflect on that. Um, it sounds okay when it, we're mulling around the ideas in our minds, but once you get them out and you can really look at them, you might have a change of heart. You're like, "Wow, that sounds really petty. I can't believe that came out of my mouth." <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> well, you know something that happens, I think, too, in our modern world is people aren't just journaling, but they're they're doing it sort of publicly and calling it blogging, right? Right. And so you see these people who just do this kind of they, – they put all their stuff out there, and it's it's not just helping – it's not meant just to help them. It's 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 kind of uh, passive-aggressive, can be really negative. I mean, it's, I don't always like what I see out there with some of these folks. Yeah. You know, I mean, I do think there's mm-hmm. something to be said about keeping that private and keeping it for yourself – and not putting it out there, but obviously a lot of people like I think like the attention they get when they put their problems online. It's a little and, narcissistic, honestly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, in my yeah. humble um, opinion. And, yeah, and a good exercise for people who are you know struggling with an end of a relationship is to you know write a letter to your your ex partner, but don't send it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm so seeing people who, who write that letter online and yes. they post it not just for their their. Ex, they put it out there every, for the world to for see. everybody to see. They want everyone to know about all the stuff they're dealing with. And I'm like, really? Really? You're doing that? I so, can't believe you're doing that. So we, we have to take uh, uh, a break. So really quickly, um, before, uh, before you go, let everybody know how they can find you and reach you and get in touch with you. 
sure. The best way would be to head to my website. It's ranchocounseling.com. And I'm also on Facebook at Rancho Counseling. Cool. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us today, Alicia. Thanks for having me. You guys have a good rest of your day. Enjoy you your spring break, Tobin. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been talking with Alicia Tavener. She is the uh, she's a licensed marriage and family therapist and the owner of Rancho Counseling and uh, a regular guest here on the show. It's always a treat to have her on. So it is time for a break at 648. I'm Aaron Brinker. And I'm Tobin Brinker. And we are on the brink and we'll be right back. For more local radio every day, listen to KCAA. Are you looking for the right place to purchase your landscaping items? Well, come see us at Hydroscape. Hydroscape offers a large selection of irrigation products, including Irritrol and Toro, such as their efficient precision nozzles. For 40 years, Hydroscape has been family owned and operated, serving Southern California. With 17 locations, our knowledgeable and experienced staff is equipped to help you with all your irrigation, landscape, and outdoor living projects. Whether you're installing irrigation systems, wanting to maintain a healthy landscape, or simply create a beautiful lit space for outdoor entertaining, Hydroscape is the place to go. Visit our website at hydroscape.com for more information and find helpful articles on our blog. Or call our customer service center at 1-800-395-4477. What is San Bernardino going to do with the Carousel Mall? Keep track of the mall development and more local news in the San Bernardino City News. Local sports, education, business, and entertainment news in print and online at sanbernardinocitynews.com. Larry Burnett here inviting you to join Mark Mancini, Fred Wallen, and me for open season every Thursday at 3.05 p.m. here on KCAA. We talk sports the way real sports fans talk sports, and we talk sports with some of the biggest names in the game. Names like Vin Scully, Jerry West, Goldberg, Tommy John, Sam, Bam, Cunningham, and Byron Scott. We tackle the issues, and we don't pull any punches. So join us for open season every Thursday afternoon here on KCAA AM and FM. That's 1050 AM and 106.5 FM. Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company has been serving the greater Inland Empire for over 60 years. For all of your printing needs, from full color printing to high speed copying and everything in between, go to Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company. Their staff is committed to your total satisfaction. Great service isn't just lip service at Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company. It's the way they do business year after year. Having trouble finding drafting supplies? Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company still carries a complete selection. Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company is rated high in customer satisfaction by Value Star, an independent rating company. For all of your personal or business printing, call Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company at 909 792 3478. That's 792 3478, or visit them on New York Street in Redlands off the I 10 and the Crosstown Freeway. Sedona 999 by novelist Marcia Siniceros is the futuristic sci-fi book of the year given five stars by readersfavorite.com. Sedona 999 will take you into the future with alien experiments, unparalleled action, and thrills of military element. Pick up your copy of Sedona 999 at Barnes & Noble or Amazon.com. Broadcasting more local radio programs than any other station in California, we are KCAA. Welcome back. I'm Aaron Brinker. I'm Tobin Brinker. And we are on the Brink, the morning show, and... So excited to have you. I guess I keep saying this, to have you joining us. We understand that you have lots of lots of choices about what to listen to in the morning, and we appreciate you joining us this morning and every morning here on KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5. So, Aaron, you found a great story that we just have to talk about. I did. I did. Yeah. I did. So um, one of the things that uh, – there's been a phenomenon in the last uh, several years, many years um, – called helicopter parenting. Mm -hmm. And helicopter parenting is a parent who's all up in their kid's business all of the time. They fight their kid's battles. They make all the decisions for the kids. They go to the schools and, you know, um, really come down hard on the teachers. And and you've had to deal with this, haven't you? Yeah. And and when I first saw this article, I thought of this cartoon that's been making its rounds on the internet for a while now 
where they show uh, then and now. And the then picture is the teacher telling the parents that the kid's not doing well in class, and the parents are yelling at the kid. And the now, pe- te- the now cartoon is the teacher telling the parents that the kid's not doing well, and the teacher, the parents are yelling at the teacher. Right. And and that's what this article is about, right? It's about how parents have enabled their kids to become sort of slackers and failures because they're not properly parenting. They're putting the blame in the wrong space. And so this was uh, uh, written by a father of three. Uh, he's got a son who's age eight, two daughters, uh, seven and four, and his wife's a school teacher. And after 15 years of, of you know, watching his wife teaching and hearing all of her teacher friends talking about their stories and whatever, he felt it was time. He's a writer. He felt time, it was time to address some of this. So he came up with some lessons that he learned, and we wanted to share them with you. So the first one is, parents, you are not your child's best friend. You are their parents. Exactly. Okay? And he says, if I can only get one point across to my fellow parents in this post, is that you're not your child's friend. You're their parent. Your job is to instill in them good behaviors, morals, and to enforce the rules. Too many parents that he meets think that they are supposed to be their child's best friend. Your child has a best friend, likely is likely. They yeah. have friends. They only have you to be yeah. their parent. And, and he, make, he says, look, this is a mistake. He says, a best friend is a person who supports you in good times and bads, but doesn't hold you accountable for your actions or discipline you. That's why we have parents. Parents have got to hold the kids accountable and discipline them. So, and we'll give you an example. So Johnny comes home from school. Um, you know, mom, the teacher said, you know, the teacher, you know, picked on me in class and called me names and whatever, whatever. And so the fir- your first reaction is nobody can call you names. Nobody can do that to you. Mm-hmm. What used to happen is what we did with our kids um, we looked at the ch- our, our child and said, okay, so if I call the teacher, am I going to get the same story from them? Yes. And then usually the the, 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 the face, the, the expression on our kid's face would change. Oh, uh, well, uh, they're going to say, uh, make right. something up, make something up. And you real they, they they realize that you're not just going to fall for whatever they have to give you because yeah. kids are going to try to get away get away with whatever they're going to get away with. Yeah. Nowadays, however, not that our kids are that old, but what a lot of parents do is they'll call up the teacher and you know be upset with the teacher without getting the other side. Yeah, and 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 this doesn't mean not having a sympathetic ear for your kid, right? right. You're still going to listen to your kid. You're gonna you're gonna to have a conversation with them, but at the end, you're going to do what we call parenting, right? Yes. You're not going to be. 100% on their side blindly, you're going to actually do some investigation. If your kids screwed up, you're going to hold them accountable for their screw up, help them to learn from it, right? Yes. And you're going to love them through that and say, look, I, I love you. You know, you made a mistake. Let's fix it. If they have a teacher that they <laughs> don't, whom they don't like, yeah. you're going to, one of the most valuable lessons that you can learn in life is that you're not always going to get along with everybody. And even people that you are friends with or care, or care you'd say you really like your boss, there's going to be times in your relationship, in a, in, in a workplace, for example, where you're not going to get along with yeah. your boss, even if you guys get along normally. It happens. It happens in all relationships. Yeah. The ability to weather that storm is, is a hallmark of maturity. If we and don't teach our kids how to do it, they'll never learn. Exactly. Now, point number two, I, I love this one. It says, parents, learned helplessness is your fault, not your child's. Yes. Right? If there's one true failing that our generation of parents have instilled in our children, it is learned helplessness, which is simply the knowledge that if they, if they say, I can't do something, that their parents will then complete the task for them. In doing so, we are raising a generation of kids who either give up after one try or don't even try in the first place. Failure is a part of growing up, and kids need to learn how to fail, then pick themselves up, brush themselves off, and try again. Right. This is important too. So we went to the uh, we went to Famous Dave's yesterday for lunch yeah. in Redlands, and with a bunch of science teachers, the group of science teachers, and they were talking about um, we were talking about science education. And one yeah. of the things about majoring in a science um, is that it's hard, mm-hmm. and kids need to learn that number one, they can do hard things, they can fail and come back and then succeed. That it's worth the effort to do those hard things. Um, but we have done a a poor job in general of teaching kids how to be resilient. Yeah. And that's really what they're talking about. Exactly. And, and we have a word for an educator. You know, we talk about grit, right? You want them to have grit and that, yes. that kind of intestinal fortitude that they can you know, come back from this stuff. So I remember once when our son was, um, uh, he must have been 11 or 12 years old. Now, he's always was a gifted kid. By 12, he was in high school. Yeah. And he, he didn't want to heat something up in the microwave. And he's like, Mom, how do you use this? And I looked at him like, are you smoking crack? Right. The same way you've always used it. It's right. a microwave. If you're hungry enough, you'll figure it out. Exactly. <laughs> 
Exactly. Well, and this goes to the next part of this is that, you know, kids need to figure out how to follow instructions and they need to figure out what steps to take um, when they're not given instructions, but simply, you know, have a task that needs to be accomplished. Right. And, and you know, if you're doing everything for them, they never learn that. Right. They never, they never learn that. And that is such a like simple fundamental part of being an adult when you, you know, growing up. I mean, you got to figure it out. Um, the next big uh, point on here is parents must advocate for your kids, but you must also support your child's teacher. And this is, again, that balancing act, Yes, you know, of, of looking at the whole picture. Right? So, so especially by the time they get into high school, and we only have about a minute left, but yeah. by the time they get into high school, you should be, instead of fighting your children's battles, you should be coaching them on how to work through the problems themselves. Yeah. They can come to you and get advice. Well, this is what happened. Okay, what could you do about that? What are you thinking? Yeah. And and you give them the tools they need to be able to fight their own battles. Yeah, Our son had a, a teacher when he was in high school that was particularly hard on him, and the grade had come down just a little bit. And I went and met with the teacher, and the teacher was unwilling to bend. And it was pretty clear to me that, that it was kind of the teacher's fault. He hadn't gotten some things graded and whatever. Regardless, he said my son needed tutoring. I supported the teacher. I, I drove him to school early for the zero period every day so he could do the tutoring. The grade came up, and my son and the teacher learned how to work together and had a lot of respect. If I had just taken my son's side and gone up to the office and screamed and yelled, he would have learned that he didn't have to to make adjustments. Let your kids fail. Yeah. Let them figure it out. Help them figure out, but let them fail and then let them succeed. Yeah. So it is 6.59 at the end of the show. I'm Aaron Brinker. I'm Tobin Brinker. And we are on the Brink, the morning show on KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5. Have a great day, everybody. You're listening to KCAA, Loma Linda, California. The best station in the nation. I'm Tanya Hansen, CNBC Radio. Wall Street is set to open higher as stocks continue to recover. Starwood Hotels, which owns Sheridan and Weston Hotels, has accepted a revised buyout bid from Marriott. The new stock and cash deal is worth $13.6 billion. The Marriott Starwood deal would create the world's largest hotel chain. We'll get a read on housing later this morning. Data on existing home sales is due at 10 a.m. Eastern. Analysts predict a drop. Some one percenters in New York want to pay higher taxes. A group of more than 40 millionaires has written Governor Cuomo and state lawmakers calling on them to consider raising taxes on the wealthiest New Yorkers to raise additional revenue to deal with child poverty, homelessness, and rebuild aging roads, bridges, and tunnels. Apple is expected to announce a new smaller iPhone today and a new version of its iPad. Stocks expected to start higher. Tanya Hansen, CNBC Radio. Okay, forest animals, kids are coming to the forest, and it's up to us to make their visit a good one. Sparrow, have you practiced the most popular bird songs for the year? Of course. Catchy. I like it. River, how's the temperature? It's a refreshing 52 degrees, man. I love it. Uh, Turtle. He's not here yet, man. Uh, He's late every morning. Okay. Squirrel. The forest has been preparing just for you. To learn more about cool things to do in the forest, visit discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. You can learn to DIY just about anything. Today, we'll be making our very own bath beads. We'll need mineral oil, ammonia, and... and... Gosh, I feel like I'm forgetting something. After all, some things are better left to the pros, like buying a home. Because without an expert to guide you, you're just asking to get burned. Oh, look at that. It also works as a hair remover. So DIY yourself a favor and get Realtor. Head to Realtor.com slash Get Realtor today. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. From the KCAA Weather Center, I'm Ron Pritchard. For this morning, we've got patchy fog, mostly sunny skies and a high near 75. Tonight, a chance of showers, mostly cloudy skies, a low near 51. Tuesday, a chance of showers, cloudy skies, gradually becoming sunny with a high near 68. Tuesday night, mostly clear with a low near 47. Wednesday, sunny with a high near 74. Wednesday night, mostly clear, low near 50. Thursday, sunny with a high near 80. Thursday night, mostly clear, low near 50. Friday, sunny with a high near 81. Friday night, mostly clear, low near 52. Saturday, sunny with a high near 80. Saturday night, mostly clear, low near 53, Sunday sunny and a high near 79. That's your weather forecast for this hour from KCAA 106.5 FM and 1050 AM, the stations that leave no listener behind. 
It's time for your KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5 traffic report. I'm Aaron Brinker. In Chino, we have stop and go traffic on the 60 westbound between Central Avenue and the 57 Orange Freeway. The 10 West is slow and go from Central to the 57. The 210 West is slow from Mountain to Foothill. In Morena Valley, the carpool lane is blocked on the 60 westbound approaching Day Street. An injury crash is blocking the carpool lane. A heavy traffic is heavy from before Hecock. In Lake Elsinore, stop and go traffic on the 15 northbound between Indian Truck Trail and El Cerrito Road. In Hesperia, there's an accident. The right lane is blocked on the 15 southbound after Joshua Street. An injury crash involving an overturn has the right lane partially blocked. Traffic is heavy from before Main Street. In Morena Valley, stop and go traffic on the 215 northbound between Cactus Avenue and University Avenue. The 60 West is heavy between Hecock and the 215. And finally, in Corona, slow traffic on the 15 northbound between Hidden Valley Parkway and Harupa Street. The 15 South is slow and go from the 210 to the 60. This has been your KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5 Traffic Report. I'm Aaron Brinker. Here's the latest. I'm Jay Corwin. Presidential candidates set to address a leading pro-Israel group today in D.C. Frontrunners Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton will headline the annual APAC conference. The American Israel Public Affairs Committee, Rabbi Rick Jacobs with the Union for Reform Judaism, says he doesn't plan to stick around for Trump's speech. A way of saying that we are deeply, deeply uh, uncomfortable and disturbed. Meanwhile, a Trump campaign spokeswoman tells ABC News they're adding extra security resources for larger events so campaign staff won't have to step in if an incident occurs. President Obama continues his historic trip in Cuba.